the dragons that we've grown to love are going to become the enemies? Hi, hello you guys. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Hi, hello. It is me. It is I. Hi. My name is Wendy Ivy or also known as the Geek Goddess here on YouTube. Welcome. Once upon a time, I did a video where I talked about theories that I have for the future books in the Empyrean series after Iron Flame came out. Now we have a lot more information to go by. I mean, we literally have a release date. We have the name of the next book, Onyx Storm, and we have some information from interviews that Rebecca Yaros has done and things that she has posted out about what's to come for the next book. So we're going to talk about what we know about Onyx Storm, and then we're going to talk about a few theories, because I already did a whole video on theories, so if you guys want to see more theories, go on to that video. But now that we have some things established, here's some things that we know about Onyx Storm, and then some theories to kind of piggyback off of it. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about the things that we know about Onyx Storm. Number one is Liam and the death theory. So I'm going to look over, if I'm looking over here, it's because I'm looking at the notes that I took. I was watching a interview that she did with Columbus, some, some interview she did in Columbus about Onyx Storm. So we, I wrote down here. So one of the biggest theories that we're often talk about, I even talked about this, about when it came to the next installment was that people thought that Violet was going to have the gift of resurrection. I even thought that, to be honest, I thought that Violet, because she saw Liam when she was like, um, going through some hardships, she was dying. She was, she was going to have the gift of resurrection. I thought she was going to be able to resurrect or like speak to the dead or somehow be tied with death because of Malik. This was sadly, sadly shut down when Rebecca Yaros said she really wanted the stakes to be high. And when a character died, that's it. They were dead no coming back to life like she wrote this series really wanting the stakes to be high like there's no resurrection there's going to be no resurrection in the Empyrean series once someone's dead like they're dead does she will she change her opinion in the future maybe we don't know you know but as of right now as far as book three goes we know violet does have a second signet that is going to manifest in book three because rebecca yarrow said that it's already manifested based off of book two but it's not going to be resurrection so if you guys thought that theory you're going to be sadly disappointed and i'm sadly disappointed too because i had that theory too i thought that that was what her gift was going to be so next we have the ending so when Rebecca Yaros was asked in the Columbus interview, when they asked her like, hey, do you know what you're going to do for the ending? What sort of interview, what, what sort of cliffhanger? Because we already know she always leaves us with a cliffhanger. Rebecca Yaros's only words were, you guys are going to hate me for this one. And added, it's a roller coaster. So prepare your therapy appointments ahead of time, because this is going to be this is like for her to say you guys are going to hate me for this one makes me feel like this ending is going to be much more intense than the other two books. So I feel like someone is going to die or there's going to be a turning point for the worst. So does Zayden officially turn bad? Like does he literally become the enemy? Does he fall into the venom trap? What does this mean? All we know is that it's going to be a bad one we're gonna hate her for it and her saying this you're gonna hate me for this one almost makes me feel like this ending is gonna be a lot worse than the other two books next we're gonna talk about the taylor swift song or album so in an interview the same interview that was in columbus they asked rebecca yaros hey if you if onyx storm were a taylor swift song or a taylor swift album what song would they be and Rebecca Yaros really said Red Coded, and then she mentioned two songs. She said Vigilante Shit, which is one of the songs. It's not in Red Coded, or Rep Coded, I'm sorry, Reputation Coded, Reputation Coded. And she also mentioned another song that goes So It Goes. If you guys know the lyrics to the song So It Goes, some of the lyrics say, you know I'm not a bad girl, but I do bad things with you. And we already know 
I'm not sure if this is talking about, like, you know, the smut. I feel like this is more, like, we know that Zayden is Venna now. You know, he's doing some, she might be doing some questionable stuff because he didn't be falling to the dark side. So, is Violet going to fall into a more morally gray character personality, too? So, according to a Swifty in the comment section that this interview was on, she said that the album Reputation Coded is all about burning down all that she used to care about and only focusing on the person that she loves. So she's ready to let everything burn for Zayden. And then it makes you think, like, if she's ready to let the world burn for Zayden, what does that say for the dragon? Because we know Taryn and Scale they're tied to Zayden and they're tied to Violet. So chances are, if something happens to them, Taryn especially might also end up unalive and thus scale as well. If that happens and Zayden and Violet choose to burn down everything else for each other and their dragons follow, what is that gonna, where does that land with the other dragons. What kind of war are we entering now? You know, (laughs) a civil one? So the next thing that I want to talk about is balance. So when asked if there was anything else in particular that she can say about Onyx Storm, Rebecca replied that this book is all about balance. What it takes to balance, especially in reference to magical balance. So how to magically balance. And I feel like, again, this is referencing Zayden, okay? Because we know at the end of Iron Flame, spoiler alert, I mean, if you're here, I'm assuming you read Iron Flame, we know that Zayden turns Venom. We know that he turns, you know, Venom. He turns to the dark side. He draws power from the earth and turns Venom. So I feel like this one is going to be all about balancing the dark side with the light side. I think he can do it. And the reason why I think he could do it is because he's a, I forgot what they were called, the people that like read minds that are technically supposed to be killed. He's one of those. So the fact that he was able to overcome that, which is so rare, I feel like he's got this. You know, I really do. This could also be referencing Violet because, and this could be referencing both, honestly, because we know that Violet is manifesting a second signet. It already manifested in book two. Maybe in book two, book book three is when we really realize what that second signet is, and she realizes what that second signet is, and we see her trying to balance the two. Maybe the two counteract each other. Maybe her first signet is entirely combats the second. She still hasn't even fully managed to grasp the first signet. So seeing her having to balance yet another one, I feel like it's going to be rough for her. I feel like it's going to be rough for her. So I feel like this is referencing both Zayden and Violet because they both have their own shiznit, their own magical balances that they need to, well, balance. (laughs) So lastly, I want to talk about one more thing that we know about Onyx Storm, and that is Good Morning America. Okay, so in Good Morning America, Rebecca Yaros made a whole video, which I will play here. Good Morning America. I'm excited to finally announce that the third book in the Empyrean series will be released January 21st, 2025. I can't tell you much yet, but I can tell you the title, Onyx Storm, and there will be politics, new adventures, old enemies, and of course, dragons. The book is up for pre-order now and I can't wait to share more details with you later. So in this video she talked about what's up and coming for book three. She says there will be politics, new adventures, old enemies, and of course dragons. Okay old enemies probably referencing Jack, right? That's an old enemy. New adventures, something new, an expanded world. We did see the world expanded in book two, you know, with the Iron Flame map. There's a little bit more on the map than there was in Fourth Wing. Book three, I'm pretty sure that we're going to get even more of that map. Politics, they're creating a new, like, hatching ground for the dragons. What, What does that mean with, like, politically for the dragons? You know, we know that the dragons have their own politics. They go by their own rules. You know, so what does that mean politics for them? And also for the people that are at Biscaya. Like now everybody knows the truth and I'm pretty sure it's shaken everyone to their core. 
they know that the venom were real and they know that the general that the army that these people the general was they were hiding that these venom were real they were hiding behind the skies behind the wards and now that that layer has been peeled and they see what's really going on what does that mean for Never in a hole so those are the things that we know now let's go over a couple of theories okay so the next theory that we're going to take a look at is one that a tiktoker named sean r also known as sean dot r a 16 posted so we're going to take a look at his video and then we're going to go ahead and talk about it so this is not my video this is their video and i will make sure to put their link to their account down below as well so let's take a look and i have one massive theory that i think is crazy but i think that the dragons have their own agenda let's go to chapter one in fourth wing violet is talking to myra i was trying to get her to leave her dad's folklore book at home this is how violet describes that folklore book Maybe it's childish, just a collection of stories that warn us against the lore of magic and even demonize dragons. And Myra goes, Is that old book of folklore about dark-wielding vermin and wyvern? Haven't you already read it a thousand times? And she goes, No, they're venom, not vermin. But the fact that she, that she knows what wyvern are doesn't correct herself by demonized calling it demonized dragons maybe there's more in this book that we haven't learned about yet because this folklore book hasn't been wrong yet she knows the difference between wyvern and dragons and she specifically said demonizes dragons dragons are bonding less and less with their cadets with cadets could it be because less and less dragons want to vouch for the human race could it be that the ones that do want to protect the people are trying to prove a point that they're worth protecting? Is that why Segale cries out at Zayden and says, I chose you, as in, you're defying my honor as a dragon by choosing otherwise. So I'm gonna cut this video short. He does have another theory in there that I will post again down below. So if you guys wanna see the whole video, and it's just, this is like a four part series, I believe, you can see his other videos as well. But this is the main one that I wanna talk about, that the dragons have their own plans. I mean, we already know that the dragons have their own politics, but he made a very good point that in book one, in Fourth Wing, they she was talking about this book of folklore right and she stressed uh, about like the venom and the wyverns and she they did talk about demonizing dragons she did talk about that and the fact that he points out like she knows the difference between a wyvern wyvern and a dragon so why would she say demonize dragons if she was talking about wyverns wyverns however you want to say it. i don't know how it's said if it was talking about demonizing wyverns or demonizing wyverns, why did she say specifically demonize dragons? He also made the point that like less and less dragons wanting to bond with humans. And is it because they don't want humans to be their companions anymore? Like, are they ready to move forward and just be the dragon like nation are there fewer dragons that are wanting to bond and make companions of humans it really does feel like that and i feel like this theory it has a lot of possibility it would make sense of so many things like less and less dragons finding a you know the hatching ground we already know that these dragons have their own politics they talk amongst themselves we already know that they feel like they're superior to the human race we all and then we have the thing about you know this folklore book that has has not been wrong this theory about the venom and the wyverns, the, the fact that they weren't, they weren't real, they were just myths. We know that they were real, okay? So who's not to say that this whole book is actually a history book? Dressed up and wrapped up as a book of mythology. This one, this one is good. This one's good. Because if that's the case, this whole series is gonna take 
a drastic turn. The dragons that we've grown to love are going to become the enemies? Now that's a mic drop moment for sure. The next theory that I'm going to talk about is one that I was researching and I found a podcast that you probably heard about because it's pretty popular. It's called the Fantasy Girls Podcast. And they were talking all about the title of the book. One of the girls pointed out that in Iron Flame, Zayden says to Violet, and she even quotes it, what we built together has to be strong enough to withstand a storm. We know that Zayden's eyes are often described as gold-flexed onyx, okay? So I think that Zayden is the storm. They think that because of that line, that means that Zayden is the storm. It's not this power. It's not violet. Zayden is the onyx storm. And honestly, I think so too. Because we hear so many times throughout book one and book two, Zayden's eyes often being described as gold flex onyx, his onyx eyes, his, you know, always onyx eyes. And then that line right there makes me think that, yes, this whole book, book three, is going to be about where the relationship stands. Because we know with the interviews about, Rebecca Yaros talks about, this is this book is all about magical balance. We know that she references Reputation Coded. And that, that whole album is about her rising from the ashes and doing you know, burning it all down for the person that she loves. So I feel like book three is going to be more focused on the relationship between Zayden and, 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 and Violet and where it stands now. And I feel like that is the Onyx Storm because it's not Violet. Violet doesn't have the power of Storm. That was her mom. Violet has the power. I think that was her mom, right? Yeah. Violet has the power of lightning. I think that Zayden and Violet's relationship might be the Onyx Storm. Next, there's another theory. So some people are speculating that in Onyx Storm, there's going to be multiple point of views, which isn't like a brand new thing. You know, it's not something brand new. We've seen this in the Throne of Glass series. Once Air Fire came out, we saw that the world expanded from just being Selena slash Aelin's point of view to getting multiple POVs because the world expanded, because the, I guess, the overall obstacle, challenges, uh, problems expanded, got bigger. You know, we started getting more and more of the world. We even saw this with the, um, with the uh, Court of Thorns and Roses series. You know, once we got opened up, we ended Feyre's story. We opened up and got, started to get more point of views. We started to get Nesta. That was a different scenario, but you get what I mean. Like, once the world opens up, things are happening and they're bigger, we might start getting multiple point of views. So, and I'm not surprised because we are prepared for this with the bonus chapters, with the endings at the end of every book. Some people even speculate that we might be getting Zayden's point of view in the third book and not Violet's, you know, or Zayden and Violet's. That's a possibility too. But I feel like, yeah, multiple point of views, it would make sense to do so. It would make sense to do that. So that's what I got for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it and talking about these theories because it was so much fun. And let me know what you guys think. Have you guys heard any theories? Are there any theories that you enjoy? Let me know if you guys want to make want me to make a whole separate video where I literally just dissect other people's theories that I find on TikTok because I am so down to do that. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to see more theories, I have more theories that I will link at the very end of this video. It'll pop up here here. And I'll also post it down below. I have a whole reading log reading vlog for fourth wing and iron flame if you want to check that out if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell to be notified when i post thank you guys and also hit that like button because i know it glows or something right so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video Bye.